Well, once again, this is Eric, Program and Curriculum Coordinator for SPURS. You've seen me in a lot of these videos. Uh, today, I'm here to introduce Stephanie Rosen, who is an assistant instructor for the Department of Rhetoric and Writing. She is also a partner in the SPURS program, so she'll talk a little bit about her partner schools. She'll talk a little bit about her own research, and then today, she's going to talk about connotation and denotation. Stephanie. Thank you, Eric. Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie Rosen. I'm an instructor here at UT and I'm also an instructor for San Juan and Frontier High Schools. Hi guys. Um, so I'm also a graduate student here at UT where I study literature and science in the 19th century. Now in this semester you guys have been studying writing your arguments in your essays, writing your arguments in your paragraphs, and writing arguments in your sentences. Now we're going to talk about how you can make arguments at the level of the word. So we're going to be talking about words today. Now, words have meanings. And there are two kinds of meanings. There are denotation and connotation. What's the difference between denotation and connotation? Well, denotation is the meaning you'll find in a dictionary. And connotation is the meanings that are associated with a word. Now it's very important to think about both denotation and connotation when you choose your words in your writing. That's why I'm going to tell you a little bit more about them today. Now connotation are the meanings associated with the words. Those meanings can be related to values and emotions or pathos. They can be specific to the audience you're speaking to, and they can be related to history and kairos. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples so you can start to understand what this means. Let's take some examples from your work last year on the DREAM Act. Think about the word citizen. Now, the denotation of citizen is a native or naturalized member of a state or nation who owes allegiance to its government and is entitled to its protection. I got that definition from the dictionary. But the connotation of citizen has certain values and emotions attached to it. For American citizens, those emotions might be pride, belonging, or entitlement. But for undocumented immigrants, those emotions might be jealousy or hope. Or exclusion. So you see, the connotation of the word has several different values and emotions attached to it. And those can be specific to the audience that you're talking to. So let's talk a little bit more about audience specificity. To take another example from your work on the DREAM Act, think about the word border. The denotation of border is a line separating two political or geographical areas. Now the connotation of the word border depends on the audience that you're speaking to. The connotation of the word border for an audience in southern Texas is the Mexican-American border. But the connotation of the word border for an audience in Canada would be the U.S.-Canada border. So the connotation of a word depends on the audience that you're speaking to and it can even depend on their location. The connotation also depends on the history of the word and on kairos. So to take one more example from your work last semester in the DREAM Act, let's think of the word immigrant. The denotation of the word immigrant is a person who comes to live permanently in another country. But the connotation of the word immigrant includes that word's history. And in this country, that means it includes all the different groups that have once been immigrants. And that would include, for example, English, Italian, Chinese, and Mexican immigrants. So as you probably noticed in your work on the DREAM Act, while immigration can be a divisive issue that sets groups apart and against each other, the word immigrant can actually be a word that brings people together because of its history. Now, the connotation of a word also depends on kairos. To take an example from your more recent work on the political campaigns, think about the word economy. The denotation of economy is 
the wealth and resources of a country or region. But the connotation of economy in 2012 might include recession, weak, or maybe even crisis. But at other times, depending on the Kairos, the connotation of the word economy could mean growth, strength, or prosperity. So the connotation depends on the history and on Kairos. To review, the connotation of a word includes all of these things, all the meanings associated with the word, which can be values and emotions, which can be specific to an audience, and which can include the word's own history and the kairos of the moment of the rhetorical situation. So, to help you tell the difference between denotation and connotation, I'll just point out this trick. Denotation starts with D for definition, and connotation starts with con for all the meanings that come with a word. Now, whenever you're choosing your writing, your words for your writing, it's very important to think about both the denotation and the connotation. This is why choosing words from a thesaurus can sometimes be a problem. Because words that are listed as synonyms often have the same denotation, but might have very different connotations. So let me give you a few examples. The word house and the word home. Now both might be listed as synonyms in a thesaurus because they both mean a place where humans live and sleep. But home has connotations of warmth, family, safety, connotations that house does not have. Another example, the word minor and the word child. They might be listed as synonyms in a thesaurus but, and they both mean a person under the age of legal maturity, but child has connotations of innocence, immaturity, maybe vulnerability, connotations that the other word minor does not have. This is why it sometimes can be a problem to use a thesaurus when choosing a word. So, you might be wondering how should you choose a word? Well, I'm going to give you some tips. When you're choosing words for your writing, and especially when you're choosing keywords for your political speeches, it's very important that you think about both the denotation and the connotation. So, how should you choose a word? Well, here's a few tips. Number one, look it up. Use a dictionary, because a dictionary will give you the denotation of a word, and it will give you some clues towards finding out the connotation of a word. Number two, think about it. Use your own knowledge. What associations do you have? What meanings are attached to that word in your own mind? Number three, ask. Ask people, maybe of different ages and different backgrounds, what associations they have with the word. Here you'll get some more clues to the connotations of a word. And four, listen. Pay attention to who uses the word, when they use it, and how they use it. These steps will help you get a very good sense of a word's denotation and the connotation. They'll also help you develop your own vocabulary and your ability to choose the right words for your arguments. Now, I'm going to leave you with a few examples that you can discuss um, with your classmates, words that might be listed as synonyms in a thesaurus and have the same denotation, but have a very different connotation. Now I've put these examples up for you on the board that you can talk about with your classmates. These words might be listed as synonyms in a thesaurus, and they might have the same denotation, but they have very different connotations. Group of words with almost the same denotation. Salary, living wage, and minimum wage. Here's another group of words that might be listed as synonyms in a thesaurus. Politician, public servant, candidate. Here's another group of words that politicians talk about a lot. Crisis, problem, issue. And here's another group of words with similar or the same denotations but different connotations. Solve, save, fix. Now, I'd like you and your classmates to talk about how these words have 
similar denotations, but different connotations. And remember, when thinking about a word's denotation and connotation, I've given you four steps. Number one, look it up. Use a dictionary to find out the denotation and whatever you can learn about the connotation. Number two, think. What meanings do you associate with the word? Number three, ask. Ask other people, people of different ages, different backgrounds, what meanings they associate with the word. And number four, listen. Pay attention to when, where, and how other people use the word. These steps will help you develop a good sense of each word's denotation and connotation. Thank you very much.